Good evening and welcome back for chapter two tonight of Hank the Cow Dog. Let Sleeping Dogs Lie. And this is by John R. Erickson, of course. Tonight, chapter two, The Case of the Moving Gardens. Now, we went zipping out of control, uh, me in the lead and drove her bringing up the rear. We zoomed past the saddle shed, under the front gate, and uh, on an eastern course that would take us directly to the house. However, you might say that we never got there. I knew something was wrong when I ran into a hog wire fence. Hit that sucker dead center and put a pretty severe kink in my nose. Halt! Right there! <clears throat> Unless I'm mistaken, someone has thrown up a hog wire fence. Obviously, they don't want us to sound the alarm. The big question is why? Yeah, but why? I just asked that question. Oh, it wouldn't hurt, Drover, if you paid a little more attention to what's going on around here. Okay, uh, you reckon we got into the garden by mistake, huh? Impossible. The garden is a full 15 degrees north of our present location. No, Drover, this is no garden. This is a new fence thrown up by someone or something trying to keep us from sounding the alarm at the house. You know what that means. Sure do. What? There was a long silence. Well, it means that somebody around here knows how to dig potholes, uh, post holes in the dark. <clears throat> yes, uh, but I'm talking about a deeper meaning. Oh, <laughs> a meaning far darker and more sinister. It could mean, Drover, that this ranch is about to be attacked. I heard him gasp. <gasps> By the fiends! That's a possibility. We can't ignore that. Now, the question is, how do we get past this barrier and onto our path? I began pacing. My mind seems to work better when I pace, but it wasn't easy pacing this particular point in space because uh, the area was overgrown with weeds and noxious plants. Rather interesting clue since this was around the 1st of May and weeds and noxious plants don't often appear so early in the panhandle. I salted that piece of information away for future reference. Continued pacing. <clears throat> I could feel the weed snap between my, beneath my feet, and it takes a pretty stout variety of weed f to keep me from pacing, especially when I'm putting clues together and following to a logical conclusion. Drover, we have two contingency plans for a fence of this type. One, we go over it. Two, we destroy it. Either way, it's nothing to sneeze at. Drover sneezed. I glared at him. Why do you do things like that? Like what? <clears throat> when I say we've got this thing licked, you licked your chops. When I say it's nothing to sneeze at, you sneeze. Sometimes I think you're trying to make a mockery out of my investigation. <laughs> no. I'm allergic to the beta plats. That's all. Cross my heart and up the die. He crossed his heart. All right. Then the question we have to face now is, if you're allergic to tomato plants, why are these weeds making you sneeze? Until we answer that question, suddenly I froze. My nose shot up just as a Bolt of lightning struck the cottonwoods down by the creek. The flash was followed by a loud boom. Wait a minute. I think I've got it. Oh, oh, I think I've got it too. Drover was lying on the ground with his paws over his eyes. Get up, Drover. The case is taking a new direction. Entirely new. Sniff the air. Tell me what you smell. Okay. He pushed himself up. Sniff the air. I smell the beta plant. He sneezed. Exactly. And where does one usually find tomato plants? Uh, in a garden. Exactly. 
Our clues are falling into place. Follow them to the logic answer. Okay, the answer is yes. No. Does it have to be one or the other? Yes and no. Oh, okay. <laughs> in most instances, a simple yes or no will do. But in this particular case, the answer is more complicated. For you see, Drover, we've stumbled into a garden. Isn't that what I said a little while ago? You were close. You were close, very close, considering your limited uh, gifts. <clears throat> You did, in fact, suggest that we had stumbled into a garden by mistake. I thought that's what I said. But you didn't take into account, Drover, that the entire garden has been moved 15 degrees to the south. No fooling! Yes, we've walked into a trap. Oh! The purpose of which is to keep us from sounding the alarm. What they didn't take into account was our superior barking ability. You mean? Exactly. We may be cut off from the house, Drover, but we can still sound the alarm on the count of three. We'll commence barking. One, and I want you to bark as the loudest you've ever barked. Put your heart and soul in it. Two, just by George barked as if you've never barked in all your life. Three, now let her rip. Fellers, we leaned into the task and did some heavy duty barking. Drover did his usual yip, 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 pause, yip, 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 and after each yip and on each yip, all four of his legs would be bouncing up and down on the ground. Funny how he does that. I added my deep, masculine roar, the same brand of barking that has struck terror into the hearts of coyotes, coons, badgers, skunks, rattlesnakes, and cats, and not to mention cattle, which uh, are my specialty. Loper wasn't what you would say. He's not on call to answer things swiftly. <clears throat> it took a good 15 minutes of solid barking to get a light on in the house, and at last we heard his voice. Shut up, you idiots. We kept it up, just barked our hearts out. Suddenly we saw a flash of light followed by a boom and a sprinkling of buckshot in the trees. Drover stopped his barking. Is he shooting at us? I gave him a withering glare. How dumb do you think he is? He must have seen one of the fiends. Keep barking. Uh, maybe we can get him down here. We sent up another salvo of high explosive barking. Before long, I saw another beam of flashlight and heard the yard gate slam. At last, we've gotten his attention. Keep it up, Drover. We want him to come out and find our coordinates. Otherwise, he'll never hear us above all this thunder. We kept up a steady barrage. The flashlight came closer. Then pieces of loper began to take shape in the darkness. Cowboy boots, skinny white legs, striped boxer shorts, white belly, hairy chest, angry face, cowboy hat, shotgun. He hadn't bothered to dress up, but that was okay. What mattered was he was here with his gun. He leaned on the fence, threw, a, oh, threw his light around in the garden. It revealed a, shall we say, a dismal scene of tomato plants, radishes, lettuce, turnips, and other young vegetables tromped flat on the ground by unknown forces. Then I heard Loper's face. Holy smokes, my wife is going to kill somebody. The coons must have. Then the flashlight hit me, punched me right in the retinas, kind of hurt. I squinted, but held my face and head up high. I gave him all of my attention and a big sweeping wag of a tail, and I got a piece of tomato caught up in them with my long hairs uh, near the end. I had to reach back and pull them out with my teeth. I was still hanging on to my mouth, uh, that tomato in my mouth, when I heard Loper say, 
Oh, no. I don't believe this. Hank, you idiot. You nincompoop. You moron. Huh? I glanced at Drover. He had disappeared. You he brain. You manure head, sewer dipping, ignorant, garden destroying, barking all night, sorry excuse for a cow dog. Get your tail out of Sally May's garden. Now, what? How? Wait, huh? Hey, now hold on. I heard him pump a shell into the chamber and figured this time had come for me to sell out. Never mind the explanations. I, I made a dive for the out of the flashlight beam and took aim for the feed shed. Just then, the rain hit. I'm talking hard rain, fellas. Big drops, plenty of them, buckets of water, raining down snakes and weasels and pitchforks. I made it to the feed barn just in time, slithered through the piece of the bottom where the doors warped and crawled inside. In other words, I escaped serious wetting by a matter of seconds. That's the good part of the story. The unfortunate part is Loper and his shotgun, shall we say, didn't escape serious wetting. They got drenched, soaked. But hey, that wasn't my fault. And so ends chapter two. Tomorrow night, we will gather again together live here on Facebook for John R. Erickson's book, Hank the Cow Dog, Let Sleeping Dogs Lie, Chapter 3, Another Triumph Over Pete. So, you guys have a great night. Remember, be kind, love one another, be safe. We want to see you again. Bye now.